Kemi Badenoch continues to be one of the few impressive government ministers we have in this country as she makes another huge achievement on trade in order to help British businesses and consumers. Okay, welcome back to the show. In this video, we're going to talk about the latest trade victory for Britannia. Uh, thanks to Kemi Badenoch and of course the, the 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 work that has been done by others in the uh, the predecessors including Liz Truss uh, give her some credit as well but Kemi has to take most of the credit in terms of what she has achieved now in a short space of time this is about CPTPP now this is quite interesting because they're the comprehensive and progressive agreement for trans-pacific partnership which has been a um, big hype since 2018 and basically it's got huge members in it including canada australia new zealand and japan and we are now joining this group as well massive massive trade zone uh, which is not like the single market of the european union it's not a closed protectionist racket it's actually about fair and free trade the interesting thing about this is that when the idea came up in 2018 and there were some issues with it because CPTPP was uh, at the time mostly focused on obviously big businesses and big governments going hand in hand. Corporations sent their lobbyists uh, to, to presidents' offices and prime ministers' offices to have conversations to make sure that they win. But something interesting has now happened because of the way uh, ordinary people and small businesses decided to rise up to make sure that their voices are being heard. So this um, zone or whatever you want to call it is now safe but also Kemi has done something fascinating so first things first credit to Kemi Badenoch because this this thing is a 10 a billion it's a trillion dollars market completely destroying the European Union's single market we are we've left the EU and we are going out in the world uh, thanks to uh, 70 million people who voted to leave the European Union but that aside what uh, Kemi has managed to achieve is that usually sometimes when you've had so-called trade agreements, it hasn't really been fair on developed countries. I always use the example of NAFTA. When Trump came and complained about the way NAFTA, which is a, a trade agreement between Canada, Mexico, and the United States and those countries, he said, this isn't really fair. We have to renegotiate it. And that's what America did. The idea was that America was losing out because you know you could get cheap stuff from mexico for example and all the jobs were going out of america he said we have to put america first build in america and kemi has the same mentality when it comes to britain britain first and you build in britain if you're going to have a trade agreement make sure the actual benefits britain and in terms of exports so what we've achieved in this agreement thanks to Kemi Badenoch, is that Britain will be exporting more than importing, which means that we are hopefully going to be building more in this country as well uh, in order to benefit and sell more to the world rather than just buy more, which means that you'll be just reliant on other countries for certain things that you could build here. Now, the point of free trade agreements or trade uh, deals in general is that if there is a product or an industry that you genuinely don't have and you can't have, primarily based on because of the climate or environment that you have, then it's fine. That trade agreement will help you to buy certain fruits, for example, from Africa that you can't grow here. And that's brilliant for British consumers. They could get it cheaper with no tariffs or any trade barriers. Great. But when it comes to things that you can in your own developed country build and sell, don't go out and, and buy cheap stuff from China, for example, or India. That's just being completely destroying our industries here. So this is why finally someone like Kemi Badenoch has come to government to push for that mentality that's been completely ignored until now. So uh, the members uh, of this uh, uh, trade zone uh, account for 13% uh, of the world economic output and 15% of global trade. So it's huge. Just a group. Now the UK traders, this is actually quite interesting because uh, William Bain, who is the head of trade policy at the British uh, Chamber of Commerce, has actually said that this will bring a lot of opportunities for the UK, mainly because we'll be selling more. Mr. Bain said, as prosperity increases in that region, there will obviously be more of a market for goods and services, which UK traders will be able to sell and for stronger bilateral investment. So this is brilliant. So investment will come into the country. 
hopefully, if everything goes well, and I don't want to be completely blind faith optimistic sort of person, but on paper, I'm just reporting what is being reported, what's being done on paper. You're going to have more investment coming to the country. Great. More money coming to the country. But we're also going to be selling more to the world, which means more money will come into the country again. So this could be a win-win situation. But we have to make sure as, as we get closer to the implementation of this policy and everything else, usually nothing's too good to be true. So we have to always make sure that we find out more about how things are going to be run. I can assure you that there will be certain areas that we might be losing out. As long as there will be other areas that we could be winning more, then that's a balance when it comes to trade. Unless we actually completely lose out, which again, hopefully that's not the reality with this specific agreement. When the whole idea came up in 2018, even I was skeptical because of the way it was being pushed by corporations. But now they have less say because of the countries who are members of this CPTPP, especially the developing nations who, are, who want to actually make sure they support their industries and small businesses. Luckily, corporations have been told to shut up, which is good. So the countries that the UK currently have post-Brexit trade deals with growing the list is growing every single day this is one of the few things that this government is getting right and it has always been about which government ministers in in charge of international trade and Liz Truss was very very good at this when she was in charge of trade and now came about and August continuing the same work so as you can see in Europe the reason that is it's actually this map is kind of misleading mainly because um, the, the blue sections are the countries that we have trade agreements with it actually doesn't include the the mainland Europe in terms of Western Europe, but it should because we do have a trade agreement with the European Union. So technically that little bit in the middle should also be blue. But that aside, uh, we can see uh, North America is basically being conquered <laughs> slowly. The United States trade deal is uh, kind of currently on hold because Joe Biden and US Democrats are absolutely mental. Um, but if Trump comes back or DeSantis becomes president, then we're going to have that trade agreement with America as well. Uh, the Australian side and obviously the other parts are now going to be included in the CPTPP agreement. So we're going to have so many countries now that we are conquering. This is soft British power. This is the way we are going to be conquering the world, just like how China is doing. China is taking over most of Central Africa, but we are going there as well. As you can see, there are a number of places in the south of Africa, and west of Africa, north of Africa, we are getting there uh, and we are completely, hopefully, as things are going, abandoning countries like China. But let's not get too excited because our idiotic status politicians are still obsessed with China because they're so reliant on cheap Chinese rubbish goods. This is a problem. Because let's not forget the main enemy remains the Eastern globalist empire. But it is um, the, the way things are going, um, we have to be optimistic about Hopefully, if things go well, British industries and British uh, consumers in general. If only we could have a good government to also bring down our taxes, that would be absolutely amazing and allow small businesses to flourish in this country. But uh, let's see how things go. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Maya Tusi and we are the media.